silent scan. Hello, this is SoCJ, and this is the eighth episode of the Knowledge Catalogs Physics. In this episode of the Knowledge Catalogs of Physics, we are still going to uh, work on the following learning competency, which is relating impulse and momentum to collision of objects, such as vehicular collisions. You will be needing a copy of the 7E-based self-learning module in Science 9, which I have developed, and you have to open it in Unit 4, Book 19, pages 5 to 9. This uh, specific episode has the following parts. The first part is on ask. Section Ask, Essential Question, Formulation. And then for the second part, we will be having um, Activity 63, Rolling in the Deep, from the same section. And then for the last part of this, uh, of this session, we will be having a discussion about mass and velocity and, and their effects on momentum. Okay, so it is very essential that uh, we lay the foundations for more and more curiosities. And we do that by asking the right questions. With regards to momentum and what we know about it already, let us think about the following instances in nature. Say, for instance, what do you think is the reason behind the installation of inflatable airbags in cars that, are, that only activate when an accident has triggered their release? Now, apart from how that mechanism works, how do you think will it save a person's life? Also, in an expressway, which has a greater which has a, the greater tendency to cause more damage when losing brakes, a ten-wheeler truck that is carrying sand, or a tricycle. Now, what if the truck and the tricycle are moving with the same velocity, which between the two will cause more damage in case uh, they lose brakes? Now, uh, what question do you have regarding the content of this book so far? Um, we are already in the second section, Ask. We're done with the, uh, with the Observed section. And I bet that you have already this prior, this uh, initial understanding of uh, what our topic in this book is all about. Now, what question do you have? Write it down. Keep that question in mind because that is, uh, one is go that's going to be one of the most essential questions we will be trying to answer as we go through the different sections of this book. That concludes the first uh, part of this discussion, of this session. Let us now move on to the second part of this, of this session, which is Activity 63, Rolling in the Deep. We have two objectives for this activity. The first one is for us to be able to, be able to explain different factors affecting momentum. And then the second and last objective is going to be uh, we have to be able to value personal safety on the road by raising awareness. All right, so um, for the materials, we have the following. The first one is uh, a board that is at least one meter long. Uh, this board uh, can be can have a variety of widths, pero mama ya sa ating procedure, I'll be explaining what you need to do with this board so that you can, uh, you know, uh, really identify the specification that you will need. Also, you will need books, and then you will need um, sheets of paper, a sheet of paper, and then an empty shoe box, and then pencil, a masking tape, cylindrical container, sand, and a foot rule. All right, for, for the first step, you have to stack books on top of each other. Okay, so it can be any combination of books or it can be any, I mean, it can, they can have uh, a particular kind of height that actually de depends on your preference. Stack uh, those books on top of each other. Also, uh, the next uh, step, uh, you have to put a wooden plank in such a way that one of its end is on top of the topmost book in the stack while the other tip is on the ground or table where the books are standing on. So, um, pwedeng, um, pwedeng, nandito, pwedeng nasa taas ng table lang mga to, pwedeng nasa floor. Okay, so, yung, ano, yung wooden board, uh, i, okay, ilagay, nyo, ilagay mo siya ng pag ganito. So, if, you, if you're going to look at it, like, from the side, it looks like this. Step number three, 
you have to put an empty shoe box near the base of the wooden plank I showed. It's just near the base, but it's not like nasa mismong base. So this is an empty shoe box. You have to mark, mark this uh, place of the shoe box using a masking tape. So, um, halimbawa, itong edge na to at saka itong edge na to, mark it with uh, masking tape. So, mark it right here and then mark it right here. And so that serves as the original uh, position of the shoe box. Step number four, get an empty cylindrical container. Um, any cylindrical container may, uh, may actually do. You can use empty cylindrical potato chips containers, or you can also use empty soft drink bottles. Um, pwede ka rin uh, gumamit ng iba pang mga cylindrical containers that you have at home. It is very important that uh, pwede mong i-recap yung cylindrical container mo. Kasi mamaya, um, lalagyan mo siya ng sand. So, dapat, meron siya takip, tapos mer pwede siya mag-hold ng sand sa loob. Okay, so, uh, that's a kind of cylindrical container we are looking for. Okay, so for the fifth step, you have to put the cylindrical container on the on the spot on the of the wooden plank that is close to what is indicated below. So, ito, itong cylindrical container na to, um, empty pa siya. Okay, wala pa siyang sand. You have to hold it for a while and then i-release mo siya. Remember, this cylindrical container in this photo, or in this step, is still empty. I have to release it. And then step number six, uh, once it hits the shoe box, the shoe box may move a bit upon collision. Okay lang yan. Uh, you have to measure the amount of distance uh, the shoe box moved by measuring the distance between the masking tape mark and the edge of the shoe box, the final position of the shoe box, in centimeters. Ikalkumaga, in other terms, uh, in, other, in other words, you have to calculate how far, uh, how big is the distance of the, uh, is the distance between the final position of the shoe box and the original position of the shoe box in centimeters, because uh, may centimeters naman yung foot roll mo, I am assuming. So, as it is shown, it can move the shoe box. Okay, and then um, for step number seven, you have to return the box to its uh, marked place, to its original place, and then repeat the positioning and releasing of the cylindrical container twice more. So, you'll be doing the release uh, three times for the empty cylinder. Okay, so yung kanina ng ginawa mo, first na yun, trial one na yun. Tapos si record mo dito, gano'ng kalaki yung distance na uh, yung difference ng distance between the original position and the final position of the shoe box. Or you have to record the distances by which the shoe box was moved from its mark in each instance inside the following table. It is important that your markings are accurate or at least uh, close man lang sila talaga sa isa't isa. Okay, step number eight nyan, you have to fill the cylindrical container with sand. Uh, you have to repeat the whole process of putting it in the initial position and then letting it um, letting it uh, roll down the wooden board or the plank. And you have to record your new findings in the following table. Okay, now you have to finalize your data and then you can uh, clean up your workstation. Now, as for the data, finalizing the data, I suggest that you get the average. Okay, the average... Um, distance traveled by the empty cylindrical container and the uh i mean not the average the uh, not the average distance traveled but um for these data in this table the distance moved okay get its average and then for the filled container naman filled cylinder okay i average mo rin yung kanyang distance move para meron kang um parang statistical treatment okay sa data mo all right, step number nine, uh, I hope that you were able to clean up your workstation. Now, step number 10, you have to answer the following guide questions. All right, so in each time that the cylinder rolls down the plank, what stops it? For the second question, whatever is your answer in question uh, number one uh, will be called the stopper. All right, so which cylinder was easier to stop? Is it the empty cylinder or the cylinder with the sand, with sand in it? I have to give an explanation why you think uh, this is so. Alin yung mas madaling mas stop? 
Question number three. Okay, momentum is defined as the difficulty to stop an object. A moving truck has a high momentum because it is difficult to stop. An incoming ball, bowling ball is more difficult to stop compared to an incoming basketball ball. What do you think makes one of the cylinders more difficult to stop? Empty and uh, the filled cylinder. Okay, I hope that you were able to finalize your answers. Let us now talk about the yeah the correct answers. For question number one, the correct answer is the empty shoe box, obviously. And well, we can also uh, you can also include in your answer friction, if you're quite more advanced. Pwede <laughs> ilagay friction. And then question number two, uh, the answer is the empty cylinder was easier to stop because it has lower mass. Okay, mas mababa yung mass niya. That's why it's easier to stop. And then question number three, the correct answer is uh, the following. So one of the cylinders has higher mass because it was filled with sand. So just like any incoming bowling ball, just like an incoming bowling ball uh, has high momentum than an incoming basketball, the cylinder with sand inside has higher momentum because of its higher mass. So uh, we are saying here, uh, based from our answer, that the higher the mass, the higher the momentum. And uh, the higher the momentum, it is more difficult to stop that object that has higher momentum. Ayun. Okay. So that concludes the second uh, part of this session, uh, which is activity 63, Rolling in the Deep. Okay, let's now move to the last part of this uh, discussion. I, anyway, you have to make sure that you upload your, your I mean, photos, documentations, your data, your answers in your Edmodo account and uh, tag it in your science class with me. Okay, do not forget that. Now for the last part of this uh, session, we have the following um, part, which is um, an, a discussion. On the, under the ask section. So we'll be discussing mass and velocity and their effects on momentum. By this time, okay, at this point, uh, familiar ka na dun sa relationship ng momentum at ng mass. Okay, so yung momentum is that is the difficulty to stop an object and an object. And we know that the higher the mass uh, an object has, the more difficult is it, it is to stop. And it also, uh, it also follows that it also uh, has higher momentum. Okay, All right. So for this, you know, for this uh, discussion, uh, we have the following examples. So the first one is uh, a car and then a truck. Both of them are about to hit the same kind of wall. Okay, same lang yung material ng wall, same size. Okay, so same specifications. Now, uh, which between the two of them do you think will be stopped by the wall upon collision? Is it going to be the car, or will it be the truck? Or kung di man sila mag-stop, uh, which between the two will cause more destruction to the wall? Is it the car or the truck? Okay. So uh, since the car is smaller, mas maliit yung car compared naman dito, um, it has lower mass compared to the truck, which has a bigger mass. Now, um, ibig sabihin din nun, based from our activity, uh, the car has lower momentum. So it follows that it's easier to stop. And then the truck has higher momentum and uh, a higher mass, thus it has higher momentum. So it is uh, more difficult to stop. Okay, so in this, you know, in this um, scenario, uh, we are talking about uh, mass as a very important factor that affects momentum. Right, for the second uh, factor affecting momentum, let us consider the following examples. Okay, so these are identical cars. Uh, well, iba lang yung kulay nila, pero pareho lang yung specifications la. Say for instance, pareho lang, uh, you know, Mustang or what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot about cars, but uh, I hope you get what I mean. Um, it is possible for that uh, there are, di ba, two cars that are very, you know, very similar, kasi pareho yung kanilang model, di ba? Okay, say for instance, uh, tapos yung kanilang passengers are uh, of the same weight, exact weight, kanon. They are very similar. They are identical. Now, they're about to hit the wall. 
However, as you can see, um, at this point, kung, okay, when, say for instance, if this is a photo um, na na-capture, it's obvious that uh, this red uh, red car has greater velocity because nauuna siya kesa kay blue. Ay, parang ano yan, parang, halimbawa, yung parang um, they are running and then nag-take ka na mabilis ang picture tapos nakuha mo that based from that picture nauna ang red. Kesa kay blue. Diba? Ayan. So, um, red red car has higher velocity and the blue car has lower velocity compared to the red one. Okay, so, which do you think between the two will have greater uh, damage upon hitting the wall? Okay, say the wall is very sturdy. Um, alin kaya sa dalawang cars na yan ang, mas magta- ang magtata- magtata mo ng mas matinding damage? Why do you think so? Mm-mm. Okay, so yung ano natin dyan, ang pinag-usapan naman dito niyan, hindi na mass kasi pareho lang sila ng mass. So yung variable dyan is yung kanilang velocity. Okay, so um, since the red car, it has greater velocity than the blue one, it is doomed to suffer greater damage because it has higher momentum. Parang ganito. Um, if these cars are uh, going to, ano, to be stopped by, I mean, say for instance, two moving objects. Okay, so, alin yung mas mahirap i-stop? Yung basketball ball na, mas, na mabilis ang velocity or yung basketball ball na mabagal lang? Alin yung mas mabilis i-stop? On ba, in soccer naman, uh, somebody kicked a ball and it uh, went your direction, uh, which is easier. Uh, to stop the ball that was uh, sent flying with a higher velocity, faster siya? Or is it the ball that was sent uh, rolling with a lower velocity? So, mabagal siya. Diba? It's quite um, obvious. It's very, actually, it's very obvious. Okay, so um, since the car, since we are talking about momentum as the uh, difficulty to stop an object, and uh, a, a very fast car is very difficult to stop. Great, uh, therefore, a very fast car has greater momentum. Okay? Okay. Now, velocity is another factor affecting momentum. An object that has high mass and high velocity will have high momentum. Kapag ang isang object or isang car, ang isang vehicle, halimbawa, ang isang napakalaking truck, Napakataas na ng mass niya, tapos napakabilis pa niya, sobrang taas ng momentum nun. Okay, so an object that has low mass, tapos mabagal pa siya, mababa lang momentum nun. Kapag mataas ang momentum ng isang vehicle, mahirap siyang i-stop. Kapag tumama yun sa pader, may tendency masira pa niya yung pader. Okay, kapag naman mababa ang momentum ng isang bagay, madali lang siyang i-stop. So kapag tumama siya sa pader, pwedeng... Hindi naman mag-cause ng damage yung collision dun sa pader. Okay, so the two factors that we talk now in this ano in this uh, discussion is uh, going to be are go it's going to be the following. Are there the following? Okay, so um, momentum is equal to the the the, the product the multiply. <laughs> That's not actually correct. Okay, so the product of mass and velocity. So that is the kind of relationship that uh, they have. So the greater the mass, the greater the momentum, the greater the velocity, the greater the momentum. Okay? Uh, in symbols, uh, momentum is represented as P, as in portable, and then mass is represented by M, and then uh, V, velocity is represented by V. And so uh, that is it for the last part of this session. All right, so for this session, uh, this is the eighth session, no? Ayan. So uh, we were able to finish the following parts. Ask essential question, question formulation. Ask activity 63, rolling in the deep. And then ask discussion, mass and velocity, and their effects on momentum. Ayan. So it has been a while since I uploaded, uh, since I last uploaded a video lesson. And I hope that, uh, you know, you were able to learn in the previous video lessons and that you will continue learning with this new one. This is still Sir CJ and I hope that you will, I will be with you in the next episode of the Knowledge Catalogs Grade 9 Physics. Have a good day.